Annual fall play. Yes. Thank you for coming out tonight. If you don't know me, my name is Chris Peterson. I am the elective department chair here at Lincoln Park High School and the director of this production tonight. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Pipeline. Yes. Quick shout out to the back of the room. It's so great to have so many students here tonight. So thank you students for coming out to support your peers in this beautiful, beautiful play. First, some logistics. Because this is a small, intimate space that we've made, please take out your cell phone and make sure that it's silenced and make sure it doesn't do any of those blinky things. Right? Thank you. Just take a moment and make sure that is happening. I appreciate that. And now, let's get to Pipeline. This is a beautiful, beautiful play about a mother and a son. That's at the plot level. But at the core, this play is about the school to prison pipeline, an issue in our country. It's a play about race and class and parenting and education in America. I think you're really going to connect with the words and the characters in this play. Do what you always do when you go to the theater. Find a character or two that you relate to, listen to the words, and then let the story just flow over you. I cannot wait to see your reaction to this play. I've got two more quick announcements. We are making history tonight because tonight is our second night of live streaming the show. Hello, everybody out there on YouTube. How you doing, everybody? Say hello. Yes. We are live streaming the show right now, which is very, very exciting. And secondly, we have never had a double cast in the fall play before. So this is closing night of our first cast, and so I'm really excited for them to go out strong tonight. So let's sit up and join this wonderful conversation that is Pipeline! <laughs> I know I shouldn't, but I don't know what else to do. We need to talk. It's about our son. He got into a fight on school grounds, and they're thinking, they're thinking about, they're thinking about kicking him out. They're talking pressing charges. They're going to, I don't know what they're going to do. It's just. I'm exhausted. You know that? Like there's no more helium. I am sinking. Like there's all of this weight. I can't fight gravity, you know? Like there's all of this pulling down, taking all of my... I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. So anyway, um, give me a call when you get this so we can talk about your son. Our son. Us. Yep. Hey, bye. And, uh, I also miss you. I shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that. Xavier, it's Naya calling to talk about our son. Give me a call when you get this. Thanks. Bye. Good morning, students. Welcome to another glorious day at Chad C. High. Please remember to take off your hats. No sagging allowed. New policy in effect today. 
Homeroom teachers are now going to lock your cell phones and other non-school issued devices in their drawers. You will retrieve them at the end of the day. If you have any objections to this, then you are free to leave your devices at home. If you are caught with any non-approved electronic device in class, this is an automatic suspension. No exceptions. I repeat, no exceptions. Please do not have your mamas coming up here demanding to get your smartphones back. We have the city government behind us. You cannot win. I repeat, you cannot win. Also, there's a pep rally today after school. Be sure to attend and show your school pride. And finally, have a glorious day, students. A glorious day. Morning, students. Pull out your pens. Pop quiz today. I wasn't looking at her. Ought to cut her face. I wasn't looking at her. Thinking she's so cute. I wasn't looking at her. And she ain't that cute. I mean, I was kind of looking at her. What? I, just a little bit. What's a little bit? Modestly, no intention, just observing. What you gotta be observing for? T to learn the world. Not just be wrapped up or whatever I'm doing and nothing else. Everything is more important to you than me. You important to me. Not hardly. You're just biding your time till you figure out what to do next. Ain't that it? Why would you say that? Because I don't like talking at nothing. I like to say exactly what's what. Fine. You want to know what's what? I want to know. I don't know where I'm going to be two days from now. Or <sighs> two hours. I can't be pretending that we in some fairy tale fantasy. All I need to do is chill with you in our castle with our horses or whatever. Horses? <laughs> whatever, I don't know. Whatever they got in castles. Truth is, I got too many stresses. But being with you don't really make them go nowhere, you feel me? So you're saying adding to your stress level? No, I'm saying I got stresses, real ones. But hiding in your dorm is just prevented the inevitable. Is this some right version of a breakup? It's just me being honest. Well, screw your honesty. Seriously, Omari, you're going to make my heart explode with all this back and forthness. One minute I'm the cure, the next minute I'm the cause. Maybe you're your own stress problems, and I ain't got nothing to do with it. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm confused. That's the realest shit you've ever said. No, this could be our last time. Are you kidding me right now? I'm just seeking intimacy. You seeking to get socked in the eye. I don't turn on and off like no stove. You mean a faucet. I mean a stove. Quit gassing me up and killing my damn spark. Can nothing kill your spark. Yours gonna be on fire. And you always gonna be crazy. I'm scared. Why you fight him, oh? Why'd you say you're gonna cut Killy's face? Cause she thinks she's cute. You wanna mess that up? Maybe it would make things balanced. Like what? She wear on the outside, what I feel on the inside. Messed up. So, I messed up. What did your mom say? She's probably only penning her speech. Threatened to send me over to my pops. But he wouldn't go for that in a million years. You ain't even supposed to be here right now. If Where else can we meet? Then well, let me talk to you anywhere on campus. I'm supposed to be packing my stuff to go home. Can't you let your parents crib? Then we'll let me anywhere near you. Teen pregnancy stats got them spooked. They have no idea who or what I am. I know what you are. You don't even know yourself. How you know me? I know you. What you know? You're a metamorphic rock. Here you go. What? Science references from Mr. Peterson's class ain't gonna save you from my wrath. I'm not trying to get saved, just making an observation. Explain. Metamorphic rocks, right? They change form due to heat and pressure. So it makes them so rare and valuable. And that's me? That's you. I think I'm in love with you. I think I'm leaving. Where are you going? Somewhere. I got some money saved up, child support. Add it up when you don't spend it. You just gonna run away from all your problems? What else am I supposed to do? Stay here? Let them take me away from my life? My future? Maybe not. They recorded it. So threaten anybody who put it up. If it goes viral, I'm a rap, and it's gonna go viral. I'll never be able to trace it. You'll be a celebrity. I'll be public enemy number one. You won't. I'll be a monster. You'll be that guy nobody will mess with. That's not the legacy I'm trying to leave. Then what legacy are you trying to leave now? Running away? I just gotta go, Jasmine. I know what you are. What am I? A lunar eclipse. How's that? Rare and hiding in the shadows of the earth, always looking for an escape. Peterson's science class was the best. 
Don't leave. I think I gotta. I can't survive this prep shit without you. Hey, you can survive anything. Don't leave. Can I hold you one last time? Make it last forever? This period. You turn in your reports? Not yet. Humphreys is on me. I told him English department had it not. Give me a damn break. I mean, I just got my face reconstructed. Asshole. You look good, Lori. Can't even tell. Well, my husband can. And my daughter. I freaks out, she says. I mean, anything freaks out that is a pain with at least a gazillion ounces of mascara or a liter or however you measure mascara. All I know is that she's obsessed with it. I mean, what the hell happened to teenagehood? I remember dyeing my hair orange and pressing my nose to rage against the status quo. Now it's just fashion this and mascara that and next top supermodel house life with blah, blah, blah. I mean, what the hell are they doing? Are they going down? Probably. And the substitute was an idiot. Asked my kids with you do I was gone? Three weeks while I was gone. And you know nobody can give me a straight answer? Then finally Alejandro cracks. Watch The Wire. Season the wire? four, he tells me. The Wire. Suck a sub is showing them what not to do. Are you kidding me? Which sub was this? I don't know, that cute young blonde straight out of teacher's college, Patricia or Patrice or something. I mean, what the hell are they teaching them over there? The last sub they sent me showed them dangerous moms. Are they really supposed to believe that public school is Michelle Pfeiffer and Hillary Swank and corn music and close-ups? I'm a chick that never had the opportunity to win over a classroom full of black and Latino kids. This is war. I got my face cut by the family of a failing student. So screw them and their lives and their substitutes that show them these godforsaken setting them back 400 years educational bullshit. Teach, I left you lesson plans for a reason. They should have gotten you Smith. She's a substitute teacher from the gods. When I was away that week for Mars pneumonia, I came back and they already moved on to the next chapter of Invisible Man. Had the papers graded and everything. Impressive. An enigma, an enigma this place. You gonna retire or what? Screw them and a retirement. Try to move me from the 9th to the 10th to the 12th. I'll last them all, bastards. You're a pistol woman. I'm a goddamn machine gun. How's your son? Troubled. Next question. Figured out what you're gonna do about? No, I haven't figured out anything. I'm slipping off the edge of the earth and there's no answer to this dark, dark universe. The world isn't flat, Naya. Mine is. It's flat and coming to a quick and fast end. I can't stop it. No, it's not. All you gotta do is grab by the ball to turn it around. Your son need a swift kick in the ass. That's not what O needs. I remember when parents used to give us permission to spank their kids in the classroom. You old enough to remember that? We teach teenagers. Especially the teenagers. I don't think I remember that. That was the best, I'm telling you. I had this one boy, Louis Gaspacho. I remember him real good. You know, some of them stick around with you for a lifetime. He had this kind of schizophrenia thing going on. Undiagnosed, but I knew. Maybe they should let us prescribe these drugs instead of these bogus doctors. <laughs> I know these kids inside and out. I knew Louie and another kid, Ritalin, ruined, but they decided to listen to that sorry excuse of a counselor, Miss Elsa Mann, who would prescribe a drug to Jesus if she could get him to sit down for five minutes. <laughs> Never figured it was probably her tactics and not the kids, but whatever. These <sighs> folks can never get him tested for his mental health. Couldn't afford the medical bills. Half of these damn kids are suffering from mental illness. A costume can't fix that shit, and neither can Ritalin. But what do they know? Nothing. And who listens to me? Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> Louis Gaspacho? Exactly. That boy could be a terror if he was having a day. So one time, he threw a book at me. Nearly knocked out the little West Indian girl that sat right in front of him. I don't think you should call I him I grabbed that. his scrawny ass right in the middle of class and gave him three licks to his backside. Never a book thrown again. <laughs> that boy got almost straight A's that entire year. But they don't give me my credit because he got pulled out of school and institutionalized a couple of years later. So it was like he never existed. But I had him functioning how you know. Good old ass whooping could teach a lot. That's not what O needs. I wasn't saying that, I just... It's everything. It's me, I'm the source of it, and I know it, and I just can't talk about this if I'm gonna get through the rest of the day. I gotta pick them up upstate after work, and I'll finish dressing them. Don't worry, honey. We're all just a bunch of screw-ups trying to figure out our mess. 
You'll Go figure ups. it out. Not literal. Don't take it literal. Right. Ladies, what it do? Let it do right back at you, you sexy bastard. I'm just trying to get me a couple of food just a little flirtation between the young, hot security guard and the old and agile teacher. Harmless. Hey, you looking good, guy. Got you looking brand new. I can't keep this chick down. I'm glad to have you back. Afternoon, Naya. Hi, Dan. How you been? Surviving, like every day. Good for you. Yep. Uh, Came from the lot today. They jacked the cars again. They still haven't deterred those bastards? Not yet. Golden said we're working on getting more surveillance. What the hell is the point of security cameras they installed if it can't scare off these hoodlums? I'll be stationed out there from 12 to 3. Don't worry. I won't let them lay their hands on your bench, baby. Screw you, funny man. Me and my Oldsmobile hasn't failed me yet. It's like having an old and faithful husband. Nobody wants him but me, and that's good for both of us. Ain't nothing wrong with your car. Ain't got character, just like you. Well, that's enough socializing for me today. Gotta get my classroom ready for these next set of hoodlums to come in. You need me up there for any reason, you know how to buzz me. I got your priority. Don't worry about me. Worry about these young girls who don't know shit about fending for themselves. Me, I'm an old dame. Little reconstructive surgery, and I'm back in the game. <laughs> Got it, mama. This is my day, you know. This is always my day. You been all right? You talking to me? Girl, ain't nobody else here. You don't have to do this. What's that? Make small talk. Check up on me. Pretend to give a damn. Really, I've got a lot on my mind and lots to do, and I don't need to fill the emptiness. I'm cool. I guess you are. What? Nothing. You got smoke? You can't do that in here. I was gonna take it outside. I don't wanna have to bust you. You being funny? Will it make you smile? I'm all out of smiles today. Oh, well, that's too bad. What's left of your students? Gwendolyn Brooks. The Pope. You know her? You think I spent all day guarding this school and none of the knowledge rub off on me? Lots of people go to school and don't learn Italy. It's very possible. True that. But I ain't one of them. Oh, that's good. So, you been all right? Why do you keep asking me that? I want to hear an answer that makes me satisfied. I'm not here to satisfy oh, you. Oh, damn, say you were. Then let it go. Never hear from you anymore. Don't do this here. That never happens to me. First time for everything. <laughs> I do something you didn't like. You can tell me. You don't gotta give me the cold shoulder. This is not a cold shoulder. What is it then? Sanity. Coming back to my senses. Professionalism. Intelligence. Appropriate behavior. That's what this is. You gonna play by the books on me? I'm not playing by anything. Jesus, I can't do this right now. <laughs> All right. Don't do anything. Okay. Okay. Got 10 minutes before my next class. You sure you don't have a smoke? I need it. Today, I need it today. That's something we do well together, ain't it? What's that? Vices. 
I don't. I guess, maybe. Class, today we're gonna look at one of my favorite poems by Gwendolyn Brooks. We Real Cool, The Pool Players, Seven at the Golden Shovel. We Real Cool. Now, I want you to look at this poem in both versions that I'm sharing with you. Notice its layout. We left school. These are from two publishers. One, HarperCollins, a known white American company, and the other, Broadside Press, one of the first major publishers of the black revolutionary writers. We lurk late. Revolutionary. Come on, Tiffany, you know what that means. Think about it. Yes, change. Thanks for the assist, Tamika. We strike straight. In the HarperCollins version, the layout is pretty common. Large title, words at the beginning of each stanza are capitalized. There's almost an attempt to erase the idea that this poem was written in broken English. We sing sin. But in the broadside press version, the font looks like graffiti writing, not what we normally see in our textbooks. That's right, Deshaun, because graffiti writing reps the hood. I would agree that it doesn't get the same respect. We thin gin. So why do you think this independent black press decided to lay out their poem in this broken graffiti style? What do you think they're saying about structures and rules? What do you think they're saying about the education of the young men in this poem? We jazz June. The pool players in this poem are teenagers. And what if I told you it was the middle of the day on a school day? What are they doing in a pool hall on the school day? We da, da. Da. Gwendolyn Brooks is saying something here. She's saying that they are the ones skipping school, hanging around and thinning gin, jazzing June. Yes, Darnell, June is a girl's name. So what does jazzing June mean? Okay, Paul, I think we could find a better phrase, but laying out that pimp game will do for now. We real cool, we. Some people may look at the broadside press and think that it's invalid because it doesn't follow the rules of English grammatical structure. We left school. It looks we, like graffiti writing. We lurk late. But sometimes rules are meant to be broken. We strike straight. Sometimes we, the street has valuable lessons too. Think sin, we... Miss Brooks has her own rules. Then Jin. She breaks up the we's on each line because she wants us to pause. Jazz June. She wants we, us to think about that we before we move to the next line. Da, da, da. Because who are they? At pool halls, skipping school, hanging around, having sex. What will they become? We da, da, da. Miss Brooks gives us the answer in her last line. We. A line that haunts us all. We. A line that will be their epithet. We, we, we die, die soon. What? I said, we die soon. I am... Um... No, no, I'm, I'm fine, Shauna. I, I think that's enough for the day, so... I'm sorry. I, I've got to step out for a sec, but you can work on this poem silently, okay? Work on your response to this poem independently. I'm going to step out for a sec. Darnell, Paul, do not get up from your seats. I'm serious. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Shit. Yes, I'm fine. No, yes, I'm perfectly... You know one of them kids is causing a ruckus. You know all you all do is hit me up, right? I'm fine. I can handle my son just fine. Son? My what? I said my students. Why are you... Because you just... I've got work to do. Are you okay? I'm goddamn amazing. school is freaking screwed. Girls can never mind their own damn business. God supports at every level. It's like private school for what? For who? 
Ain't nothing you do here private. My parents are stupid crazy, spending all this money to keep me away from the kids in my neighborhood. Cause they so damn spooked I'm gonna get pregnant or shot or some shit if I go to public. But I'm like, they must have never been here in the staircase at Fernbrook. Cause for reals, it's all types of teen shit going on. <sighs> and these rich girls are the nastiest. It's like their privilege brought them some extra freak or something. I mean, or maybe they have never know what it's like to be desperate, so they'd rather go figure it out through sex or whatever. I mean, it's tragic. I cannot keep myself here in this wasteland of talent. Stuck up girls in my dorm acting like I'm gonna steal their fabric softener or grab their granny panties out of the laundry because I don't got my own or whatever. Like, are you serious? Girl, I may not have your money, but I have both my mother and father working their asses off at two jobs just to have me study up here with y'all because they think your privilege will rub off on me by association or some shit. <laughs> or maybe they believe in this false god of Fernbrook Academy and that it produces better people. I keep trying to explain to them that someone like me would actually survive better in an environment in which I am comfortable instead of being the token poor girl of color which everyone thinks is trying to sleep with their asshole boyfriend or steal their crystal cocaine or whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, the worst shit my friends from the block are smoking is weed. <laughs> I swear, if it wasn't for Mr. Peterson's class in O, I would have slipped my wrist. That's why I'm going after Omari. He ain't gonna have me here with these boozy, brainwashed brats. I'm going after my man. Y'all gonna read about this in one of them urban romance novels. It's called Ghetto Love. <laughs> Yo, I got company. Let me call you back. I got some more bitching to do. That was only half. Jasmine? Can we talk? I came here to get Amari. I figured that. He was supposed to be here with his things, meet me down the downstairs. But he's not here, not in his room, nowhere. Really? Do you know where he is? Sorry, miss. I don't know. Are you sure? I'm sure. Did you see him at all today? Earlier? I saw him earlier. And did he seem upset? Was he himself or? I know what happened. I mean, I wasn't there. I didn't actually see him put his hands on, but I was informed. I was in class at the time. They said he was having a bad day, I think. A bad day? Sometimes people go messing with you on the wrong day. It's like, they don't know what's your last straw. They don't know how much times you've been sucked of everything you got. They go picking at you like lint, and so be surprised when they, you go knocking them flat the hell out. Jasmine. Yes? He's my son. You know that, right? I know. I'm not, I'm not here to hurt him. I'm here because I love him and I want to make things right. You get that? Of course I do. So I need you to tell me where he is. Sorry, miss. I don't know. Okay, you say that. It's just, you're the one he talks to the most. Am I? You are, and if anybody, if he would tell anyone his plans, more than anyone in the world, it would be... Me? Yes, exactly. Wow, that's real. Jasmine, I don't want to make a big deal of this to school right now. He was supposed to get his things and be waiting for me downstairs. This is our routine. If I ask the school, they're going to sound the alarms, make more of a problem. And whatever trouble Amari's in, he'll be faced with more. God, Miss Joseph, they're unreasonable. Okay, what does that mean? He's not a criminal. I know, Jasmine. I don't think he's a criminal either. I just want to know where he went. Sometimes people push you too far make you feel like another animal from another jungle, like you don't belong, even when you're here. Because they got expectations that you of the wild, so you become that expectation. It ain't born in you, you feel what I'm saying? It ain't what you want to be, it's what you become. And that's the crazy affirm book.
Jasmine. He's my heart, Miss J. I love him. Then tell me where he went. I ain't no snitch. Snitch? I still come from what I come from. This place don't change that. Jasmine, you know where he went. Not exactly, anyway. What is that? What does that even mean? I got ideas. If I'm in his head right, but, but I don't know nothing for sure. Give me some ideas. I can't do that. Please, miss, don't ask me. I'm not his betrayer. His betrayer? <laughs> I'm trying here, Jasmine, to keep cool. I'm trying not to unravel, unleash. I don't want to see you unleash. I know you think it. this is not an act of loyalty. In your head, maybe, but not in reality. In reality, you're sentencing him to... I need to find him. You look real stressed, miss. I'm very stressed. He's my son. I understand. I know what it's like to love him hard, believe me. Do you? His unpredictability is manic. It's excruciating, like nails driving straight through the heart muscle. But on the inside, He's like an infant, needing some kind of nurture, and he got a kind of sweetness to him that make you want to give it, make you want to give up everything you got just to hold him tight. Jasmine, this is not helping. <laughs> Did you ever like me, miss? What? When I'd come over, it's like you hardly ever really, it's like you were polite, but not nice. I know the difference. Jasmine, I, I don't see what this has and to I do with- And I ain't trying to grill you or nothing, but I was just always curious, like, if it was something I did wrong I didn't know about, like, sat in your favorite chair, or drank the last of some juice I didn't know was near empty, or some action of mine, or just my presence alone. I understand either way. I was just, I always wondered. Jasmine, I don't dislike you. Yeah, but you don't like me either, right? Like, I mean, I don't dislike you? That's like, Passive aggressive, sort of. That's like not committing to loving or hating. Almost worse, like different. Jasmine, I, I don't know. It's hard to like someone you don't know beyond a few hellos. Someone smart and cute, most days. Someone you still don't know that well. Someone with a heart so big the sky couldn't hold it. Someone I'm sure is great in her own ways. Someone definitely great in every way. Hey, sure. But also dating your son. My only son. Exactly. Like the way you just said that. That was almost kind of like a threat. A th What do you mean? And excuse my language, please, but I mean, yeah, bitch. That's my only son. Are you trying to take him away from me or whatever? I said, excuse my language, please. <laughs> I hope you heard that part. I heard that part. <laughs> OK. Jasmine, do you have any brothers or sisters? This like a bonding question or interrogation question? Whatever comes with an answer. I got one older cousin and one younger. They both boys. They're like brothers to me. Sometimes. You know what it's like to care for them? As a woman, wondering what can happen to them when, you, when they leave into the world every day? Um, they just my cousin, so... It's a gamble, Jasmine. All the time. You send your young man out into the world every day or away for a weekend, a semester, a school year, but you don't know... You have no idea if they're safe. You have no idea if one day someone will try to expire them because they're too young or too black or too threatening or too loud or too uninformed, or too angry, or too quiet, or too everyday, or too cool, or too uncomposed, or too mysterious, or just too, too. You don't know, Jasmine. 
and it is frightening. It leaves a tremble in your heart on the daily, and if someone could ease that tremble by unveiling a little piece of the puzzle, it would mean everything. You know what I, you get me? Men are a puzzle, straight up, I get you. I know you care about him deeply. So deep, I got indigestion over him. But keeping his whereabouts a secret, that's not helping him. Not even a little bit. What you gonna do if you know? Go follow him? Go convince him not to do something he already set his mind to? You really think that's possible? It wouldn't be worth my salt as a mother if I didn't. Miss Joseph, I know you don't think I'm good enough for your son. My mother doesn't think nobody's good enough for me. I get it. Nobody's good enough for nobody. But me and Omari, we got something real. And even if you think I'm worthless, I'm still gonna love him. I don't think you're worth- Nah, you do. You don't want to, but you do. I can smell when I don't make sense to somebody. I make you afraid, just like O makes my parents afraid. It's like you send us here to become these different people. You want us to have so much, and you want to protect us from ourselves. You love us, and we get that. But you hate us too. You hate us having our own mind. You hate that we can't be exactly what you imagined in your head. And that scares you, that we don't belong to you anymore. That someone can come along, and we might love them more than we love you. You hate that for us and we can feel it inside, and it makes us run away and never come back. Where is my son? Maybe the train station or the bus. To go where? He didn't say, but he said it was goodbye. And he didn't, he didn't, somebody come to pick him up? Caught a ride with Brian. He told the counselor he was coming up to pack his coals and he, He'd be a burden to you. Why would he? They videoed it, miss. It's gonna go viral, and somebody already sent me a text. Jesus. He thought he'd bring so much shame to you. He thought he'd ruin you. And he didn't mention a place? I need to know now. I need to know. Maybe the train station or the bus? I don't know. Has he called you? No, but I was gonna go look. I was. Listen to me. Listen. If he calls, texts, gets online, or contacts you in any way, you call me immediately. You understand that? Sorry, miss. You're cut out, and so am I. Just do as I say. I've been so many places in my life and time. I've sung a lot of songs I've made some bad I've acted out my life in stages With 10,000 people watching But we're alone now And I'm singing a song to you I'm back, Ma. I am. Um... Where you been? With some friends. Friends? It's gonna catch a bus over to Philly. Philly? What were you gonna... Philly? My boy Rashad said he had a crib for him his father passed. He has a couch in his, um... So that's the plan, huh? Run off and not face any of this? Leave me here to deal with this mess? That's the plan? It was something. I don't know about a plan. Well, what happened? Plan go awry? No, I just... I don't know, Ma. I just came back. I see. You've been smoking. You've been fighting. I... You want to hear? Do you even care? Don't do that, Amari. Do what? Ask if I care. Put this on me, deflect. That is not gonna float right now. I'm not trying to deflect, Ma. 
I'm asking if you care to hear or if you prefer not to hear because maybe the details won't make it better right now. I always care. I'm not saying that you don't. Then yes, tell me the gory details. I want to know what devil got into your hand and made you attack your teacher. You don't understand, Mom. Make me. I want to start by saying I'm not justifying. There is no way to... I'm not justifying. But what I say now is just the how, you know? The how and why, but not the excuse. I'm not, I'm not making none of those no more. I'm done. So give me the how. It's like I went blind for a second. I couldn't see straight. I had no insight and no outer. I was just trying to get through the week. What blinded you, Amari? He was questioning me in class. Questioning you how? I wasn't in the mood for being questioned. I told him I wasn't in the mood for being bothered. He has, he's your teacher. He has the right to... Nah, he don't. Not how he was doing it. He was doing a lot, and I was sick of it. We get to discuss in the reading, Native son, Richard Wright, and he start asking all these questions. What made Bigot Thomas kill that woman? What were his social limitations? What made the animal in him explode? And who he looking at when he asking all these questions about who he looking at? Sorry. Like, like, like I'm the Sparks person. Like I'm Bigot Thomas. Like I'm predisposed to some shit to know what it's like to be like an animal. Amari, watch your mouth. But you hear me, though. You hear what he doing? He start singling me out. He, he's asking me to answer. What did I discover from reading the text? Amari, he's your teacher. He's supposed to ask you about the text. Nah, he ain't. But he wasn't just talking to me about Native Son. He wasn't just talking text, Ma. He's saying something else, something beneath the question. It's like I'm the only one who can hear it. That doesn't give you the right to be the animal, Amari. But it's all he's seeing. I said, mister, don't call on me today. I ain't got nothing to offer. But he won't leave me alone. A teacher is supposed to engage you, even when you don't feel like it. That's the teacher's job. I've told you that repeatedly. We're not talking a teacher doing their job, Ma. We're we talking provoking. We're talking agitating. We're talking disrespect. We're talking respecting my space on a day where, where I don't feel like being singled out. You're in school. You're not in your personal space. You're in a collective space. A space to be engaged, and stimulated, and provoked, and questioned. That's education, Amari. I'm talking biased education, Ma. Now, he knows he wasn't, he was questioning me in that class, in that way. On that issue, he was saying something directly to me, Ma. I know he was. Even if he was, Amari, even if, what are you saying? You're saying that makes you attack him? You're trying to draw some perpendicular line here. I'm not seeing where things cross. I told him to back off. You said that already. I told him, but he kept digging. And? and then he says, Mr. Joseph, your perspective is mandatory here. Tell the class what you thought or take zero for the day. Still not seeing. You threatened to punish me. You threatened my grades in front of the entire class because I don't want to be your token responder? That's bullshit. Did you also cuss like that? Or are you preserving that disrespect for me personally? I'm just amped up. I'm trying to make a point. You haven't made a point yet. You haven't said how your behavior was warranted. You haven't done anything but speak as if you're above reproach. And you are not. Forget it, Mom. No, let's not forget it. No, let's. Like, I knew you wouldn't. I knew it was futile. This is your third strike, Amari. You put your hands on your teacher. You attacked your teacher. I pushed him. I didn't attack. You think they care about your semantics? I pushed him. He fell against the board. You slammed your teacher against the board. Now that's some semantics. And it was recorded by students. No one's going to see anything different. Don't you understand I that? I tried to get up and leave, Ma. He wouldn't let me leave. That's unreasonable. I told him I wasn't in the mood for being questioned, Ma. I told him. They don't care about your mood. Exactly. They don't care, Ma. They don't care what space or place I'm in. I know me. I know how to learn. I know when I'm good and when I'm not. And I said it. I'm not good. I said that to him, Ma. That doesn't give you the right to lose your cool. You get up out of class. You see your counselor immediately. You don't just walk out in the middle of your lesson like you're some king or god that no one can tame. Tame? Damn it, Amari. Tame. Do not do that. Don't twist and remodel this convo. Don't interpret your loss in translation. I'm not changing anything. I'm repeating verbatim. So why are you here? 
Huh? Why'd you come back? Had nowhere else to go? Just didn't want to leave that way. So what is this? This is our goodbye? You came here to tell me goodbye? Ma, I just... You're dropping out of school. A school that your father and I vetted for you. A school that was supposed to... Give me all these opportunities. Make me a better man than if I just stayed here. In our neighborhood. Went to your school. Don't give me his speech, Ma. Those are his words, not yours. Your father and I thought it would be better. Better than staying with him. Omari just ain't surviving in this neighborhood. He's smart, and he could be something, Naya. Let's send him upstate and get him out of both of our hair. Don't do that. Don't speak for him or me or us. You're lost. I'm not lost. You are. You are. You're gonna kill yourself with these. Celebrating my disappearance? Sorry. <sighs> Not funny, I know. It's just, it's like a home going party or something in here. I ain't die, Ma. Sorry. <sighs> you know what? It's been a while. I'm starved. I'm gonna make us some pasta. You gonna eat? What did I do? Tell me. Ma, don't do this. I need to know if I hurt you, if I misstepped, if I forgot too much or didn't know enough. Ma, don't do this. I've tried like religiously, like an ongoing prayer to protect you. I've tried to buffer you from it all. I've tried to flee you and for you follow instructions from your father, from other mothers, from my own mother, and I still, I still don't have the answers. I don't know what you want me to say. They could press charges. I don't know what you want me they to say, They can Mom. take you from me and I wouldn't be able to stop them. I don't know what you want me to say. I want instructions. I would take a bullet for you. I will suffocate the sun for you. I will steal the sky for you. I would blind Moses for you. I will strip the wind, the rain, and the forest for you. Before you die or rot or lose your freedom, I will surrender my own. I would die if you could be born again without this oppressive rage. I just, I don't know what to do. I need you to tell me. Tell me how to save you. Tell me how to give you another life. Tell me how to take this failure away. Because I've listened to everyone else. I'm ready to listen to you. Guide me. Give me the answers. Just give it to me and I'll do it, I swear. I'm gonna make us some pasta. You gonna eat? I'm gonna sit here and wait for instructions. Excuse me, Miss Joseph, you have a visitor. 
Excuse me, Ms. Joseph, you have a visitor. Thank you. Hi, Xavier. They said this is one of your free periods. I need you some message to this morning. I lost my phone yesterday. Track. I tracked down a million clients. Market's been crazy. It's fine. I only took a half day, left the firm, and came straight down here. Okay. Can we talk about what's going on here? Yeah, sure. Okay. He hit his teacher. Pushed him into the smart board. Jesus, why? I don't know. Said he was upset, had a bad day. Bad day? Said he felt harassed more than the other students. He was targeted and wasn't having any of it. That's, uh, that's not an excuse. I told him that. Where is he now? Home. I think. You think? I, yes. He's suspended and they're deliberating on whether to expel him and press charges. That's where we are, letting it cool over the weekend. I'm hoping some of the steam will blow off and they'll, not, they'll be more lenient. This is his third strike. Yes, I know. They won't be lenient with a third strike and I am. I'm just hoping. He says he didn't slam that teacher, but on the video it- Video? Yes. This video? The kids' phones? How did they, I thought phones weren't even allowed. They're not. Then how the hell? They're gonna use that against him. He wanted to run away. He tried to run away. This all happened yesterday. I tried to call. My phone shit. Yeah. I give you Sheila's number. I don't recall. I'll give you her number. If you ever can't reach me, call her and she'll reach me. Yeah, okay. Damn, Mo. How did he get to this? How did he get this far over the line? I don't know. Did you talk to him? Did he give you any answers? <laughs> Something funny. You think he gives me answers? I'm just talking about he ought to. He's a son. He's your son, too. I know that. What is that? What's what? That. It felt a little bit like an accusation. I didn't do that. No? No. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> we said we wouldn't do that. We're not. Token. Yes, exactly. Not a blame game. No one's blaming. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it just sounded like yeah. you said he's your son. Yeah, but mine wasn't like. It just sounded like. I'm talking about he's the son. You're his mother. He ought to answer your questions when you ask him. He's the son. Yes, right. Okay, but you said he's my son. I meant the us. son. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 I'm thinking O needs a change, a big one. Yes. Maybe he should come stay with me. You and Sheila. Sheila has her own place. That's not what it'd be like. I don't know about that. Look, this is important. Maybe, maybe they won't press charges every tell him we're changing his circumstances. I'll take him out of Fernbrook and enroll him in school in my neighborhood. Or he can go here. Here? Yes, here. Here where I teach and have been doing so for over a decade. Not here. There are some good teachers here. The school's failing, Naya. Was failing. Not anymore. They divided us into four sections. We've been doing much better. And that's about student accountability and the school board. That's not the staff here. Not all of us. Amari knows them. He'll be comfortable. He'll, he'll be here and under my watch. You can't watch him all day. Naya. Neither can you. But I can give him a better surrounding. Better. Don't do that. I'm not making judgments. Let's not make it about that. Let's keep it about O. Oh. It is about O. Oh. <laughs> you do what you can. I'm not suggesting you do anything wrong, but you resist doing him the offers I make. I'm not. Look, you can be proud. You can ride and die for the hood all you want. Good for you, but that's not good for our son. And you know, you know what's best? Sending him to Fernbrook, that that didn't stop all the rage. You can't solve them from the outside in. Don't you understand that? What does that mean, outside in? I'm working with the parts I get, Naya. That's all I get access to. He won't let me in. 
That doesn't mean I'm not active. I work for which everywhere he dictates, and he always dictates, but he's our son. And he can't son. always be a dictator. It can't always be a democracy. And I try, but it's like we're running two different governments. I thought it was cold parents. Sometimes it's time. I'm not saying you don't do your part, but I'm the man, not you. And he needs a firmer hand. This isn't Maybe late. not always having a choice in the matter. Maybe he's had too many damn choices, choices and he doesn't know how to follow a leader. He thinks it's him, but where's he going? And you think forcing him is going to save him? You think my grip is too loose so he's sliding down the pipe? Which grip is best? Please show me. Please show me. Why do you always do Do what? Make this personal, big parenting son a personal battle between you and I. It is between you and I. We made him. It's not you and I. It's you and him. Me and him. Us and him. That's the deal. You and I without him does not exist. Ouch. No. Not ouch. You don't get to say that. I don't get to hurt? I can't feel pain? No. Don't get okay. to do that. Okay, that's fair. It I'm was partially. I'm not asking you to. You broke this. Not me, you. I'm moving on and that doesn't make me a bad father. I never said it did. You also didn't tell our son who the real villain was either. And he thinks it's me. I never made him think you were the enemy. He thinks it anyway. Won't listen to me, won't respect me anymore. I, I never bad talked you. If you're upset with me because of, that's fine, that's fair, but whatever's broken between you and him, that's not me. Then let him come, let him live with me, give me that authority. I have anything to give you. You think forcing him is gonna save him? Try it. You wanna dictate? Do it. You'll have a great rebellion on your hands. I can handle a rebellion. It's you. You're the barricade. When you resist, he can snip it and then I become the enemy. I won't resist. Okay. I'll talk to the school on Monday. That's what I'll do. And that's not to press charges. Maybe they'll listen. And then he comes to live with me. That's how we fix this. You agree? How did we get here? Ask yourself. I miss you. I can't. I know. Do we have a deal? He'll hate us both. Or maybe just you this time. If it saves him, I'll be the devil. Okay. But we wait until Monday, until I can effectively release him. Call me before you do. I want to be on my way down there. I want him to have nowhere to escape to. Do you understand? This is still. Shit, that's bullshit. You think it's my fault? Don't tell me you came as fast as you could. Lori, that wasn't me, okay? I called. I called and you didn't come. What did you want me to do? Watch them split each other's heads open on my watch. You wanted me to sit back and watch. You didn't call right away. <sighs> Screw you. Damn. That's what the kids are saying. Screw what the kids are saying. Ask any teacher in here. Ask Naya. She'll tell you it's bullshit. You two all right? Do I look all right? Lori's fifth period. The Sean and Hakeem gone to a fight. No, again? You hear that? What you want me to do about that? She said, again, meaning that these two got ongoing beef. It's like bloods and crimps in my classroom. And I'm just supposed to sit back and watch them drop bombs and grenades and act like that shit isn't lethal. I didn't make up the policy. Not protect the civilians. Did Coden give you shit about it? Coden give me shit about it. Understatement of the year. You want me to talk to him? Those two have been at it in my room too. It's not gonna help. Why is that not gonna help? Because they're throwing me to the fucking wolves. Because That's you broke protocol. There's no protocol in war. They stop the people from killing each other. That's all. The 
room. Please tell me what else I could have grabbed. How was an over the hill chick supposed to stop two tall teenage boys with waist and muscles and zero body fat from pounding each other to oblivion? Please tell me. Well, what happened with the broom? I hit Deshaun. She hit Deshaun with a broom. To save his life. I mean, is that even a factor? Does that even matter? Girl, I'm not saying to do it, though. I'm just letting her know it went down. Shit, Lori. <laughs> Shit, Lori. Did Coden know? Does Coden know? Deshaun ran right out of the room and straight into his office. God damn. It's going to be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> that broom. That's all I had. <laughs> what happened to security? We came. Lady. As fast as we could. He was banging his head on the floor. That's a scout all over the place. Kids were screaming. I called security and the damn line was busy. He was on the phone with Beckham. He was complaining about a kid that was haunting his room. What the hell was the protocol for a busy signal? What am I supposed to do? Stand aside and wait. That doesn't always work. Of course that doesn't work. I got a classroom full of kids to protect and myself. What kind of teacher just stands there and watches her kids fight? What was that? He was banging his head against the floor. Hakeem's head was seconds away from being split open. Deshaun was seeing red. I screamed for him to stop. Did you hear me? He couldn't hear the voice of God in that moment. What did Colden say? Talking to the parents, the superintendent. Now people who don't know shit about what it's like to teach in the classroom is gonna be my judge and jury. <coughs> you want me to talk to him? You want me to talk to Deshaun's mother? She's the least of my problems. Damn kids and their camera phones. Is everything a YouTube sensation with them? They didn't. How the hell did they get past security with them phones? Tell me that. Oh, it's back to me again? It's a simple fucking question. Some stuff get past. Ain't the airport. Could have fooled me? What the hell is the point of metal detectors if it doesn't detect all the metal? Cell phones ain't the metal we most interested in. What can I say? Don't say shit to me ever again. Lori. <laughs> keep thinking this is me. You, you acting like I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Huh? Did I not answer your call fast enough? When it's only eight of us working four different schools in one building, did I not reach you fast enough? Did I not run from one hallway to another that is speed that makes you satisfied? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that while I'm over here, barely breaking minimum wage and dealing with the attitudes of hundreds of teens and students, that I'm not a suitable servant to your beck and call. I do what I fucking can. I'm not cops stealing computers from the school lab or a bender flirting with teenage girls. I'm done. I'm the last of the good guys wearing a uniform and green kids with a smile when they enter the building. I make a sunny day out of shit. And I answer every call I get at that security desk. I do my job, damn it. And this time, Lori, maybe the job got the better of you. That shit happened. But don't you dare try to take me down with you. Cause you get in trouble, you get early retirement. You know what I get? I do my damn job. This job, I gave my life to this job. My entire life. What? Sorry. It's not just Lori. Those boys fight all the time. I've tried to stop it. Tried taking their phones, splitting them on different sides of the room. I've tried to stop it. We've all tried. You can't stop it. Don't tell me that. How you gonna stop it and you don't know the source? I'm supposed to know a million and one sources? You gotta know what they carry in them. The resentment and the rage, there's a legacy in that. The sources of those spice is older than the bricks in this building, and no one is doing their research. You got parents, teachers, politicians, whoever, trying to understand these kids, but how are you going to understand a book that you're only skimming? I've got to understand. My son's life depends on that. I've tried everything. Don't worry, Naya. You put him in a good school. 
It doesn't matter why I send him to school. Nothing's working. He's being pulled off the edge of this earth, and I keep trying to hold on to him, but the force is so strong, so magnificent, that I have to strike, strike, strike. Hold on firm or I'll lose my grip. Hang on tight, he'll start to slip. Sacrifice something mightier than my soul. Sacrifice something mighty. Sacrifice. Sacri. Sac. Naya. Are you okay? No! Don't! Naya! Naya! She's not breathing! Naya! We I die. can't breathe! Go get the nurse now! <coughs> you alright? I'm good. Sorry about this. Yeah. They said she'll be alright. Yeah. She's a tough one. That's what I always think about. Yeah. Hey, how's she holding up? Uh, they, they hold up for observation. Sorry? Overnight. They thought it was a heart attack, but now they're saying it's some kind of panic attack. They holding her for observation overnight. I didn't know you were. I'm sorry. Have you met before? Mm -hmm. I'm done. I went to the school. Security. Ah, I see. <laughs> you family? Amari's my son. Yes, I'm family. Okay. I'm nice husband. Thanks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Job. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go down to the cafeteria. You want anything up? I got it up. Okay. <laughs> Stupid question. All right, a panic disorder. That's the hypothesis. The running test now. I'm trying to make sure it ain't deeper. Thank God she's okay. Thank God. No, might be a long wait with all these tests. I'll wait. You don't have to. That's not what I meant. I want to prepare you. This test take time, man. She'll be straight. I got her. I know you. No. She and I wanted to talk with you. Words ain't the medicine right now. So, when I find out about this, acting out at school. I already pled my case to her. I gave her the old one too. I'm sure she told you. Still, I want to hear from you. Why is that? Because I deserve to know. You deserve? Because you pay for the education? Am I wasting your money? You want me to pay you back? Yeah, maybe, asshole, maybe. All right, then. I'll write you a check. You can cash it when hell is over. Don't talk to Get off! Shit! You gotta work this out! I'm working my stuff out. Nah, with me, we gotta work this out together. You quit together a long time ago. I never quit you. You quit her. You quit me. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. This adult business is not privy to. You need to keep the issue separate. I never quit you, Omari. She was creeping. That's the adult business. That's the grown-up stuff I can't handle. Never mind, let this go. You were mean, cold, making her feel like shit every day. He was never happy with your life living over here, and that wasn't her fault, mine neither. I took a kid. Never missed a payment, or first day of school, or birthday. You always had a shirt on your back and money in your pocket. Did I not do that? Is that my sin? You know, most of these fellas want their dads back in their life so bad. They think it's the, the missing link to the equation, the final ingredient to understanding their manhood. What's having you in flesh? Flesh ain't shit. 
It's no different from sperm. It does the biology. It don't do the soul. What the hell do you want me to do? Hold you in my arms as you cry and rock you to sleep? That's not my gig. I'm still your father. I'm still here. I never quit you, Omari. Titles is over me. You know what? I don't give a shit if you like it. Or want to go to goddamn basketball court me. Or want to get a tail on my ass. I'm still your father. Like it or hate it, I'm the father and you're the son. And that's the law of the land. Screw it, I'm here, Amari. You not here. You there. I'm here. We miles apart. You're gonna respect me. Do I have to like me? Do I have to enjoy my company? But the respect is non negotiable. Or what? You really wanna ask me that right now? No, I wanna know what happens if I say no. No, sometimes I want to grab you by the throat and choke the shit out of you. And what's stopping you? Witnesses. <laughs> I was sitting in class, listening to the lesson. I was going to be a silent observer. Listen to the class talk about native stuff. And I. I hadn't seen and talked to in weeks, but the check came on time. Now, I woke up with that check in my hands, and I had a feeling about that. Like, like, I knew I wanted to say something to you, but I didn't know what to say. I called you, but you didn't. So I sat there, listened to the class talk about the character Bigger Thomas and who he was and what led him to his act of rage. The teacher kept saying he was unleashed. I could make an animal. We get to discussing his circumstances of where he comes from. Single mother. That got brought up. One of the students said he only had his mother. And I'm sitting here listening to this on a day where I woke up with you on my mind and I tried to call you, tell you I had a feeling about getting these checks, tell you I hadn't seen you in a minute, wonder where you've been, but you didn't answer your phone. So I went to class, listened to them talk about single mother, poor angry animal, bigger Thomas. And then the teacher started asking me questions. I felt like he was saying something to me. Like, he knew I was sitting there thinking about you, feeling all single mother, poor, angry, animal, bigger Thomas like. And then he started asking these questions. What made Bigger Thomas kill that woman? What were his social limitations? What made the animal and him explode? And he looking at me, but also through me. And then I say, I don't want to talk about it, because all I'm thinking about is you, how I haven't seen or talked to you in weeks, but I get this check on time, like it's automated, like the bank sends it to me. And I want to know, is it even personal? Do you even mail it, or is this robot routine responsibility? And then I'm thinking, who does that? What kind of nigga just sets checks across that fatherhood? And then he start asking me all these questions, and we talking, Bigger Thomas this, single mother that, social limitations, animals exploding, and I say, do not call on me, I do not have the answer. But he keep digging and digging, and then I start to get up to walk out of the room, because I feel like the room's getting smaller, and I'm becoming Bigger Thomas, even when I hate this part of the story. And then he gets in my way, grabs me, grabs me like you grab me when you want to play daddy all of a sudden, when it's convenient for you. And I push that bitch. Threw his ass right off of me into the fucking small bird, pushed him like he was the monkey hanging on my back like he was you, and I'm wishing it was you. I'm wishing I could throw him again, pound his face into the ground, rip that check up and say, boy! But it wasn't you, it wasn't you I pushed, it was my teacher. But I wished it was you, I wished it was you so bad, I had to pee. I almost peed on myself right there in front of class. And I don't know if it was love or hate or something else, but I know why Biggie Thomas did what he did to that girl, and I hate that I know, but I hate you more. I hate you most of all. No, son. When the doctors come out, text me. Stepping out, and all. Stepping out, need some air, and I'm stepping off too. You don't want me in your life, okay? I try, but I don't know what else to do.
was going to leave you this long ass message, but I'm not I even sure you get it. And if you get it, I'm not even sure you respond back. Can't stop staring I think we're over. And it kills me in a thousand ways. Not because I'll never find love again. I know we're young, and I know I'm cute. I'll find somebody else. I mean, it's a lot of fish in the swimming pool or whatever. I'm just sad that this is an end of an era, and it's over before it really began. I don't think I got enough chances to get mad and mess up and yell and make up. I hate that. I mean, every relationship deserves to go through all the colors of the rainbow. That's how you know you had something real. Deep, ugly, beautiful, whatever. We didn't get to give all our shit a try. But the little parts we did have, or the parts that made me want to cut a chick's face for you turning her, your head in her direction, I want to thank you for giving me that space, for making me feel room enough to be jealous and mad and whatever. Because I also got to smack you and let it out and it made me feel free enough to tell you that I love you. I really, really love you. But I hate you. I hate you for leaving me and breaking it off and not knowing yourself. I hate you for being so beautiful and confused. But I'm glad you ain't coming back here anymore. Because this place, this place can't hold you. This place can't hold none of us. For real. Anyway, but hey, you know, Today, students, we have a special poem being read by an oratory speech winner, Carolina Valdez. Go ahead, Carolina. We Real Cool by Gwendolyn Brooks. I almost lost it. Almost broke down and stayed somewhere in between. Nervous breakdown is what most people call it. Doctors call it a panic disorder. I call it my moment of revelation. All my son's life, I thought there was a space for him, a little opportunity and education, and he'd be complete. But members of the board, I am here to tell you that I miscalculated. Amari's actions aren't his bag alone, they're mine. All of ours, we didn't carve out enough space. He doesn't belong anywhere. There's no block, no school, no land. He can travel without being under suspicion or doubt. No emotion he can carry without being silenced or disciplined. He needed more space to be. We will cool. We. I messed up, Mom. I think there's something wrong with me and I ain't sure what it is. I want my son to belong. I want to turn myself in. We lurk late. We. I want to take responsibility. I want him to stop smoking and drinking and crying. No, that's not your... I want my son to have another chance. Be born again with a slate clean of the baggage. Our baggage. My baggage. We strike straight. We... Sometimes, I look into his face and I get stuck staring. As if I can see what he can become. 
and the longer I look, the longer his life will be. I want him to find a place for his anger, a place where it isn't quelled but put to good use, a place where he isn't a product of bias or low, edu low expectation. I want him to know love. You see me as a monster. To feel love from all places. I'm lying to say I'm a monster. People make comments, say I should be kicked out, locked up. He's a man, young, still growing, not fully anything. We sing sin, we... Like an animal. He's not an animal. But they expect that would be. You're not an animal, not more than any of us are. And if so, we built the jungle. We then Jin, we... So, if you please, let me take him from here. Let me find him another school, reset and try again. But please don't, don't press charges. Don't lock up what hopes and dreams he can become. This rage was not his sin. It was never his sin. We jazz June. It was his inheritance. I want to be better. And I am before you to say that I take the blame. It's me. Punish me. Send me away. But my son? Not my son. We die soon. Not my son. I was thinking about what you said, Mom. About instructions. Yes. I wrote them down. Instructions. Yeah. For me? For everybody. Like a list? Like a scripture. Oh, wow. I see. You want to hear? I'm dying to hear. One, hear me out. Two, let me chill sometimes. Three, no one to back off. Four, no one to keep pushing. Five, let me have some space. Six, don't assume me for the worst. Seven, show up in person. Eight, be fair. Nine, forgive that I'm not perfect. Ten, What's 10? Uh, I don't, I don't have a 10 yet. These good so far? Yeah, so far. I'm stuck. 